All right, folks, welcome to the Crack House Podcast. My name is Mike O'Sullivan. Uh, today, I got a very special guest with me. She's been on Comedy Central, Colbert, MTV. She's a writer and a comedian. Please welcome to the show, Katie Hannigan. Katie, how you doing? Hello. Hi, great to be here. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, Thank you, you look- so much for having me on the show. And you look nice and warm when we're all cold up here. So it looks like you're enjoying nope. yourself. Yes, I'm having a great time. I'm here in Aruba. Uh, and I, unfortunately, I'll just tell everyone, I already told Michael this, but I was I was going to do this podcast from my hotel room, but my boyfriend also has a podcast that he's doing at the same time. So I decided to come down. In the, it's not going to affect the connectivity. Hopefully I can be present and really connect. Um but just be forewarned, if there's a little freezing action, it's because we were double booked in our single hotel room. <laughs> double booked on vacation. Huh, what are you going to do? So, Katie, so, give, me yes. a, give me a quick life story. Um, well, I'm from uh, Indiana. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Originally, I moved to um, Brooklyn when I was 21. And I have lived in uh, different parts of New York ever since then. And uh, um, I am a stand-up comedian and an actor and a writer. And uh, um, I live in Astoria, Queens now, but I'm currently in Aruba and it's very nice here. And I'm feeling great. That's good. You picked it. I have, you know. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, today's theme of the show is reality TV. And we're just going to talk about pros, cons, what you like, what you don't like, what I like, what I don't like. I mean, right now I'm currently living in my own reality TV show because my entire house has COVID. So I'm going through that right now. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry to hear that. Are yeah. you guys okay? That's uh, a fun way to work it into the conversation. I like yeah. when somebody drops in that they're <laughs> Um, you know, surviving <laughs> casually. <laughs> well, I don't know if I have. Are, getting, is your family okay? Yeah, my daughter's had it first. They're kind of out of the woods, and now my wife has it, and she's gotten the worst of it so far. Oh my god! She seems to get beaten up, though, and I'm getting. Yeah. Te- I'm pretty much getting tested when we end this, because she found out she got it a couple of days. Oh ago, wow! So, and we just got tested on Monday. Uh huh. And we were both negative. Uh-huh. And then like two days later, she was out for the count. So. Wow. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, I hope everybody's okay. I, I hope, hope you guys have are... a great time in Aruba. I hope it's really nice down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. COVID free. Yeah. Um, bragging. Humble brag. It's so great being healthy. Now, um, <clears throat> is anyone, so... follow- is it like protocol, like, up here down there or how is it is everyone just maskless and who cares or um you have to wear a mask in public um so that's the law here and you have to be tested in order to get on the island oh okay well a lot stricter than um the united states which is probably why they have way lower covid yeah. i would assume but there's also, you know, there's only 100,000 residents on this island, so. Oh, okay. All right. So, All right, so, so reality TV. So, so what, what, what are your shows? What are your shows? Well, yeah, the theme for the theme for this week's show is we're going to talk about reality TV. There are some reality shows I like, and some I just, I just don't feel they are reality. Uh, for example, like a show like Cake Boss. I, I just don't like it. And uh-huh. it's just because it, it's too much scripted reality we have out there. Like, I don't mind a, a, a cooking show, but to, to, to watch that show every week, the way my, my wife and kids yep. have watched it and I've watched it, it's mm-hmm. the guy's been cooking for 30 years, baking, right? But every week it seems yeah. like you can't bake that cake. And it comes down to the last minute. That's what always gets me about oh, yeah. type of shows. Yeah, it's a little contrived, I think. 
It's a little contrived, but you know, I think all reality TV is really scripted. I, I'm not a big, yeah. I'm not a big cake boss person, although I do like cake. I, I like cakes in general, but my reality <laughs> shows, I love Love After Lockup. That's a big one. I love 90 Day Fiance. And, um, you know, those I think are ones where you can tell that it's, you can tell that it's a little scripted. Yeah. Um, they script the story, you know, they don't script the dialogue or yeah. anything, but it's, you know, it's always kind of like, oh no, the father, the father will not approve. And then, you know, they build it up yeah. and then the father's like, oh, yeah, I'm actually fine with it. Yeah. So those, it's like a lot of, it's like it a is, lot of drama. Yeah. Like, um, there's the other show, Chris, we knows best. I don't know if you've ever watched this show. Oh, I haven't seen, I haven't seen that one. It's, the, it's the same kind of thing. It's a scripted, it's the the crazy grandma, you know, grandma's out there. Mm -hmm. This guy is like some, he's like a rich land developer, I think down South. It's one of those, we're rich and we okay. want a TV show now, which I, I it seems like once the okay. Canadians started, anyone with money that wanted a TV show was kind of like getting a TV show. Yeah, but the Kardashians were like connected in Hollywood. Yeah, you like, know? The, um, there was also another show, I think MTV had it with the Bush family, Anheuser Bush, and they did the same thing. It was okay, just, it, it's just like rich kids running around, but the Chrisley guy mm -hmm. was like mm -hmm. the same type of thing. It's like that scripted reality, and is it really reality? No. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it is. I think that's why they, you know, they have it's it's like pretty produced. Um, I don't I don't think there's any illusion that it's reality. You know, it's kind of like professional wrestling in a way. Yeah, and that's yeah. But that's, you know, I think people people you know, they but even if the storyline isn't necessarily realistic, I think that the characters are very realistic and that's why people are so drawn to reality TV because you you aren't really watching it for necessarily like the story is of secondary importance, but you're, you know, kind of captivated by these like characters that people are like when I watch 90 day fiance, it's always like, Oh, you know, whoever's like the biggest dumpster fire, you just enjoy watching them like flip out at a family gathering time and again, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, I, I think people watch reality shows the way some people watch NASCAR. You, you're waiting for the wreck. Yes, you're that, just that, going around in a circle. You're just going around in a circle. You're looking at it, you know. Now, with you being in show business, have you ever been approached to be on any type of reality shows or anything like that, like a last? Oh uh, well, you know what? Like yeah, I wouldn't even consider last. Con reality. I think comedy. You know, like, yeah. you, I guess they have like reality moments, but I was I was yeah. a background person on a reality show years ago. Oh, yeah, really? I guess competition reality. I was I was a I was a background person on a show where they were remaking a wine shop and we were supposed to be patrons, but you know, we we're we we're actresses, paid actresses, but we we're playing patrons. So we were supposed to go in look at the wine shop but I never left the trailer I just sat in the trailer for four hours and I guess the other girl that I was there with she got to go in the wine shop and she said they gave her money she bought a bottle of wine and then she got to keep it and I just sat in the trailer for four hours and I guess I didn't need another patron and then I just got driven back to New York I was jealous though yeah. I wanted a bottle I wanted that bottle of wine so yes, I do have experience starring in a reality TV show. If that's what you're asking, yes. Yeah, it, it yeah, like I said, it, it just seems like it's, it, there is, like I said, there is no reality to it. I mean, I remember watching, I don't know if you remember, like the, I watched the original Real World when they first came out in the early 90s. Yes, yes. And well, I remember, yeah, when the, when the Real World was out, it was really kind of, you know, fun. I was, I was yes. too young to really appreciate it, but it was like that type of show that was ever like that. And people, young kids that, you know, into that like partying phase in their life, they want to watch other young kids that are in that partying phase of their life. And for me, that was, that show was Jersey Shore. Actually. I remember when I was 20 or 21, that show was out and I was like, Oh, I just thought it was so fun. I loved all the characters. But, but you, you want, you have this like ideal of like, 
partying, going out, having these wild nights. And, you know, some people never really get to have those. But you're when you're in your early 20s, you just feel like you're living vicariously through these people. Yeah, you know, now it's just like, oh, who cares? Well, I'm in my face now. Like, I wouldn't, I, I don't want to go out and, like, get hammered and punch someone. But, yeah. you know, when you're like, wow, what tells you? It's a central, like, coming of age experience. Yeah, it definitely, Jersey Shore. I, so. I, that show really had its staying power. Because you thought it would be a flash in the pan. And they left out season well, 13 and, four, you know, I mean, we you've actually watched those characters grow up, essentially. They went, like you said, they went from fighting Yeah, but weekend, the sad thing, yeah. Right, right. But the sad thing about Jersey Shore is that, like, you know, instead of them, like, like being able to grow out of that, you know, they they're like they're like the Luke Skywalker of reality TV, where it's like they can't any any show that they actually want to do. Like, you know, when you're tw- being in your twenties, your early twenties is about like being stupid, being like an idiot, you know, doing all that stupid stuff. Right. And it's like, now here, these people are in their mid thirties and some of them are close to their forties. And it's like, they, you know, can't have a meaningful show building my own business or something. It's like, they still have to be like running around the hotel, like animals. It's like, you know, when you get, when you're doing that stuff in your late thirties, it's like, you're a fucking yeah. asshole. Like people work at the hotel, like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, you're just stuck in that bubble for the rest of your life, you know? Yeah. You got to be the party. You got to be Spuds McKenzie every night. You have to go out every night, party. Yeah, you do. It's 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 almost like a stunted development for them. But I mean, like you said, some of them are older. I think yeah. Holy D is like 48 years old or something like that, or 45. Oh, is he old. really? Oh, my yeah, God, I think, that's crazy. I, I think he's like the oldest one of the group. But like yeah, said, I remember yeah. Vin, Vin, Vinny was the baby. Vinny yeah. was the baby. And he was like, I think around the same age as me. So yeah, it, it's sad. It's like, you know, if you're, if you're being crazy, you know, in your early twenties, it's like, okay, it's a little annoying, but everyone wants to have a fun time. It's like, if you're being crazy in your late forties, it's like, you have a problem. You're an alcoholic and you need to get in a program and get your life like look at your choices look at your situation you're running through a hotel screaming you're a fucking asshole stop talking but would i do it for money (laughs) yes um yeah that's the that's the other thing it's so much it's reality shows seem like they're very cheap to produce and it's it seems like it's a low risk high reward if the show hits because it costs really nothing. Yeah, well, writing writing is writing is definitely uh, I think it, it's expensive, you know. But I think like also, you know, who knows? Like reality TV, it almost feels like that replaced a lot of stuff and now it's almost being replaced by like TikTok, you know. It's like anyone yeah. can have their own little mini reality yeah. show on TikTok. So it's all kind of, you know, it's like now it's less about like you know, I have a theater background and theater in like so many ways was like such an important like experience for people because it was the only time, especially in like, in like the Edwardian or like the Victorian era, it was like the only time you could see into people's lives in this way that you never could. It was just like this voyeuristic pleasure of, you know, you're in like proper society, but then you go to this play and you see like a couple fight and you, you know, that's not something you would ever see before. So like, TV was this, you know, this like wonderful, like voyeuristic pleasure Mm -hmm. and reality TV is just like that, you know, uh, further down on the continuum of that. It's not necessarily about like wanting to be entertained with high art. It's about like wanting to see like human nature and being fascinated by it. And, and also like, you know, seeing people that are kind of like, you know, terrible and feeling like, uh, you know, superior to them. And, and I think now we're like moving further down the continuation. It's not about like wanting to see people. It's about wanting to be that person. And that's why people, you know, yeah. everyone that's doing like their own TikTok, their own Snapchat, you know, it's like now, why would you just watch somebody be like a dumpster fire when you could be the could dumpster, be the dumpster fire? fire? And, you know, and then you, you feel like you're this famous person, even though you are just a 13 year old girl, <laughs> you know? 
yeah, to it, have like so many followers and yeah, you see so many. Uh, it, it's very tough now. It's like you just said to like it's it's almost tough to like be a parent where you have it it, it like the, the TikTok generation or the YouTube generation. It has so much power over them. Uh, mm -hmm. The power and, and of the life. Uh, well, my son is twenty, and then my daughters are sixteen and fourteen, uh -huh. and they're just in love with TikTok. Oh yeah. So it's like so constant. they're right in that de yeah. demographic. Wow. And it, and, it's and do just, you notice, are they just like glued to their phones? Are they just like, oh yeah, they're, they're constantly on watching TikTok videos and who's got the biggest hits and this one. That, and, and then if a famous TikToker likes one of your videos, it, it, it is like, it's, it's like they used to say Instagram famous. Now it's like TikTok famous too, where you have mm -hmm. so many people on there. There's people getting millions and millions of hits for doing a funny dance or the, yeah. The, lip syncing they do on there it 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 makes it very tough to be a parent these days Especially, really yeah I, I mean uh and who's the other there's there's one kid on youtube he's like a nine-year-old kid he made 28 million dollars last year playing with toys oh wow just playing with toys and he reviews them yeah how do you tell your kids yeah to to i school? believe it <laughs> You know? Well, I mean, if they can, yeah, I, I would tell them to go to school because, you know, it's like, what are the odds that they're going to, you know, they're, they don't understand. Like if, if you're like starting out on YouTube and you're like, okay, I want to make $28 million a year. It's like, you're starting from scratch in like a sea yeah. of a ton of people that are all trying to do that. Yeah. So it's like, you better go to, you better get your MBA and find yeah. out fucking marketing. Cause that's what it all comes down to now, you know? Like you I think your kids are gonna they're gonna learn it themselves when they're broke trying to put some videos on TikTok yeah. waiting to be famous, then they're still broke. Like they'll probably get sick of it. But you know, it's like when I was growing up, like a lot of people, I've been a very serious um actor from a young age. I did community theater from the time I was like six, and I always would say, Oh, I want to be an actor when I grow up. And all my little friends would say, I want to be an actor too. I want to be an actor too. And it's just like when it comes down to it, it's just like you know, you have a fantasy of living that life, but it's like no one is really willing to put in the sacrifices of like sleeping in a twin bed until you're in your forties, mm. you know. But yeah. I think it's the same. It's the same. Like there's going to be kids that like try to make it on YouTube and fail. You know, you're going to, you're going to have like a whole nother generation of yes. kids in their thirties, you know, 20 years from now that like tried to make it in, you know, tried to make it on YouTube, just like people who try to make it as comedians. And then, you know, they become mostly yoga teachers or, you know, crystal readers. So just yeah. have a backup plan. Just have a backup plan. That's all they need. Yeah. I'm a, uh, I'm on unemployment. I'm a TikToker right now. You know, I mean, that's going to be that's going to be a real thing probably in a few more years. They'll give you unemployment. Well, who knows? Maybe if who knows? Yeah. Well, they, they actually should, you know, because um, I um, I'm a, a big fan of this guy. His name is Jerron Lanier, and he was a big Silicon Valley guy in the 80s and actually like the father of what we consider um virtual reality he like pioneered the all the codes and stuff for it and and he um he's very anti-social media he said like it changes your brain you should never use it you basically you're a rat in a cage you think it doesn't change the way you think but you actually don't have control over it because every time you get a like you get like a serotonin boost it's yeah. like drugs in your mind but anyway he's a great guy to check out he actually has a theory that like all these companies that we're all spending time on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, um, they are all making tons and tons of money off of the information that people feed into them and they're selling. That's why Facebook is one of the most expensive companies in the entire world. And it's because we're all working for them for free, posting content, helping them learn how people work. And they actually should be paying people they actually, you yeah. know, we shouldn't be posting stuff on there for free. It's like, oh, if you get like so many likes on Twitter, maybe you'll get like a literary agent or something, yeah. you know, but it's like, actually they're making, they're making money off of our content because they're paying advertisers to, you know, so we should be getting paid from all those. I'm, I'm like a little anti-social media, you know, which I think is like the next step of reality TV, but 
Well, they say, you know, with, with social media, like we're, we're basically in the infancy stage of social media. And that's why we're just like, I, 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 we need as much as we can. Oh, um, yeah. People also think uh, there's been people saying in like 10 years, it's not going to be this way. We, yeah, we, I don't we'll think be able to will. like wean ourselves off. But there was a great yeah. um, documentary, The Social Dilemma, that was just out. I saw that. And I saw like, that like one. what yeah. you just said, yeah, we're, we're all just an algorithm. We're just, you know, they just want to see our likes, our dislikes, where we go every day at certain times online, who yeah. we talk to. And yeah, and they're selling it. They're selling it. Well, Jaron Lanier is on that documentary, I think, actually. Maybe he is. I can't remember. But he's a great guy. Anyway, not to not to get too far off the topic. I know we just went deep into the dark web on that one. I know. Yeah, that was that was some dark web stuff. All right, get totally. back. Totally. Let's get back to what was it? Ninety Day Fiance? You like what now? What's oh that? yeah, I love Ninety or, Day Fiance. And now what? That, that, what's that about? That one is just they just so, they just fly them in, right? That's like the. Uh, well, it's it's a couple it's a people that almost always meet through the internet so it's usually yeah. like a really bad looking american person <laughs> if i'm being like totally frank it's like a bad looking american person who's usually older who or or they have bad self esteem and they can't find an america so they go online and sorry but it, it's usually a developing nation yeah, I've seen, I've seen a few episodes of this. They fall in love person comma nice. Well, it's great. My boyfriend and I really enjoy watching it together, and um, we actually wrote a parody of it because it's just so funny. Because like it's it's so often you know somebody like who is from some place like there's a lot of women from Eastern Europe, you know, and they you know it's just like. Oh, I love him so much, but yeah. I just don't like the way he's looking at me every time. You know, it's just like they, there is no, really, there's no connection. And then the person's friends will try to, you know, the person's friends will be like, I don't know. I don't think you should be, um, you know, wiring her a million dollars. I don't know if you should wire a million dollars to the Philippines. And they're like, but I'm in love. Oh, and it's yeah. just like, so it's just, it's just fascinating to watch the cognitive dissonance that people have when they're lonely. And uh, and there's also some wonderful characters on it. Some people are truly in love, oh. but you know it's few, yeah. which is blur. Nope, oh, you broke up. What well, we're losing, Katie? Responding while them is in. Then after, uh oh, can you hear me now? Okay, now I got you. You're back. Can you hear me now? Uh oh, you're back. Can you guys hear me? Okay. I, uh oh. I Sorry about that. What, where where did you lose me on? Uh, about thirty seconds ago. Love. Okay, I think I was going on something about the characters. Love after lockup. Did I start talking about that? No, you started talking about those great, great characters yeah. on Ninety Day Fiance. Yeah the the characters are great, and you know one of the things too is this like because there's they have a bunch of different varieties there's 90 day the other way where the person goes to a foreign country and then you know that's kind of fascinating to watch too because it's often like a very entitled american person in a place you know in a place that's like utterly foreign to them so they have a lot of like you know women you know like an american woman from ohio falls in love with a guy from the middle east and then she's like she goes and she's like you know, I'm an, I'm a strong American yeah. woman. And he's like, yes, very good, but you need to put on yeah. hijab, you know? And like, like it's, um, it's just funny to watch people, you know, the classic fish out of water. Yeah. Um, Characters. So great show. Great show. And then what's the other one you love? Love after lockup. The, the other one I love, Love After Lockup, great show. Again, it is a, it's people who start, they start off corresponding while one person is in prison. And um, they, so they are together for however long. And then the show starts when the other person gets out okay. of prison and you get to see them. You get to see that, you know, usually one person in the relationship is 
batshit crazy and it's usually not the person who was in prison for 10 years or however long so it is just fun and dramatic just yeah your typical typical type of love reality shows that we got going on right now yes yes yeah those are those are the ones i prefer i'm not a big housewives person or you know no i never i i've watched a few here and there i think like the 90 day fiance i've watched with my wife and daughters where Mm -hmm. they had the guy from dominican republic i think was getting okay married i think i saw that one uh yeah there's there's so many people yeah yeah, it seems like it's a quick turnover. Yeah, like there's the a lot of Russians. Milk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, they, I mean, they milk that show. So they have 90 Day Fiance and then they have like four spinoffs. So there's always a new one on. But it's because people love it. You know, people just eat it up. Yeah. So they're, um, they're just great, but yeah. It's, you know, that, that's, all, that's all on that TLC channel, right? I think. Right. That's, yeah, yeah, TLC have, is like they, they really everything. will. Yeah, they have no. Um, they they have no moral compass yeah. on that. Yeah, no, absolutely no boundaries. It's like, <laughs> you know, some of the shows like Hoarders. Like I would consider that to be a reality show. Like those are just like. Hoarders. Hey, is the most, do you want to yeah. watch someone? It's utterly Hoarders. I know it's A and E that has I think the addiction yeah. intervention. Yeah. But it's like, do you want to watch somebody at, at, at the lowest point in their life? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's like voyeurism, you know. Hoarders is the most, disgusting, like to the, of, yeah, it's one of the most disgusting shows on TV. When, it, when they walk into those that. houses and apartments, yeah, it's, it's scary. Yeah, it's like it's it's gross, but then it's also like we're gross for watching. Yeah, it. it's like this guy, something terrible happened it, to this person. You it, know? It, yeah, there's a it's lot. Like yeah. that's not a show that you're watching if you feel good about yourself. You know? Yeah, the, like the, ew, these people are so gross. It's like, yeah, what are you doing? Or you know, my six hundred pound life. It's like yeah. that's a that is a such an exploitive show. It's like all the shows yeah. on TLC are so exploitive. So hey, do you want to be on TV? All you have to do is like shower naked and then, yeah. you know, talk about your surgery. It's terrible. But, um, but, um, what was I going to say about hoarders? I actually went into a, a real hoarders house when I was in college. I was like cleaning out, I, I was on this like little list of students who would like help out people in the neighborhood. And my boyfriend at the time and I, we went to this woman's home and we were like, she lived in this huge mansion in Indianapolis. Um, have you ever been to the town, to Indianapolis? No. They have this street, it's called Meridian, and there's all these old mansions, and it's just like, they're all kind of like turn of the century, like beautiful mansions, and she lived in one. It's like a street you would like drive down and be like, wow, like this is where all the rich people live. But it was like such a shock because we we went to this house. It was this gorgeous, incredible turn of the century mansion and it was the woman had completely packed it with all this stuff there were rats in there it was filthy yeah. it was so unbelievable and i but i remember at the time because the show hoarders didn't exist well i was like 20 years old sorry hold on i need to i'm like nervous about getting sun damage so i just need to switch my chair um sure. because i'm uh, 20 years old at the were like heard of hoarding so i just didn't know what it was until that show came yeah. out and then i was like oh my god that woman was a hoarder so it's so i guess it's more common than you would think if you had never experienced it yeah i've been in, this would I, be so awkward if you were a hoarder <laughs> this is like the clean corner of your house <laughs> i'm sitting on top of 80 pounds of garbage right now and life magazines and <laughs> but i yeah i've been in dirty i've been in apartments where it was a maze to get to the person's bedroom and it was just stacked with newspapers except for a maze to get into there just to get into rooms in the apartment and i don't know how people live like that. where was that that was in the Bronx. yeah it's when wild was, yeah i was a, I what was a part co- of new york are you in i'm in queens right now forest hills oh you are yeah oh, I live okay in forest hills. I, I live in astoria i grew okay. up in astoria 
Oh my God. What are your places? I grew up, well, let's see. I haven't lived there in almost 20 years, but I grew up on 23rd and Dittmars. Okay. Uh, oh my God. I live very close to there. I don't want to say where. I don't want your, your listeners coming to my home. But no, I that... live, I literally live right there. Oh, right. Okay. I literally live, I'm, I'm one block from there. I'm like, I'm like, you know, the um, left coast, left coast, yes. that little bakery on the corner of Dittmars. Yes. I'm on that block. Okay. I'm on that block. Wow. So right Lef- there. Left coast, butter ghost. I think that's a great area. area. Yes. I was like, I know I'm going to butcher it. Are you Greek? Are you no. a Greek guy? No, I'm Irish. Okay. But, uh, Okay. Oh, O'Sullivan. That's your last name. Yes. When I when I grew up there, that neighborhood was like, uh, I think it had to be like seventy percent Greek. Like in the eight, it, it's it's pretty Greek now, but in the eighties though, all right. You know where the Spectrum store is there, on the corner. Mm-hmm. That used to be that mm-hmm. Lefkos Pergos place back in the day. Oh in wow! That whole corner. Most. Yeah. Every comedian I have on lives in a story, and I have to give them a story of history. But uh, every, <laughs> like every storefront, had Greek, Greek uh, signage on it somewhere. Every storefront, every butcher shop had goats and lambs in the window with maybe a couple of rabbits. Uh, what else? The you know the post offices on Thirty First Street. Mm-hmm. Right where the train is there. When I was mm-hmm. a kid, that was a Greek movie theater. That's all they played was Greek. Oh movies. wow, that's from cool. Greece. That's very cool. Um, yeah. Was, okay. So it's not as Greek now. It's probably like seventy percent actors now. I guess. Yeah. There's a lot of like, actors in the neighborhood. And they wanted to rename Dittmar's Athens Boulevard at one time. Back in the eighties. That's how nice. Many, that's how Greek it was back in the day. Wow. Love it. Well, I love I love the area, the great neighborhood. Oh, it was a great. I I should have bought a house there, and I didn't. And I still kick myself for it. Oh, but yeah. Great place to live. Um, they should do a reality show there. Act sto- right. Everyone calls it Act Storia. I've heard that. Oh I've yeah, also- there's a lot of there's a lot of actors there. There's a lot of comedians there too. Yeah, I see my I, boyfriend and I. We we did a um, Christmas special where we had like we had like fifteen comedians from the neighborhood come to do, like we because he lives on thirty first, so we just opened the window and just had people come by. Yes, it was. It was very funny. Katie's uh, boyfriend, her and her boyfriend, Mike. Oh, Becky you saw Lowell. it? Yes, I thought it was very funny. Everyone just coming up to the COVID. Window well, thank Christmas. you. Thank you for watching. It was very funny. Check it out. Yeah, because we were like, well, we don't want to have anyone inside. Yeah, check it out. I guess next year. But it is a very like funny. I thought it turned out pretty good. I edited everything myself because we were like, well, we're not going to have. We thought like, oh, maybe we'll get a camera guy. But it's like, you can't you can't have anybody in your house. It's just like it's too crazy, you know. And I think where where you were film, you know, filming it in his apartment. That's they filmed Goodfellas across mm-hmm. the street. If I remember correctly. Really? Oh my God. I have to tell him that. He loves that movie. The whole beginning of Goodfellas is Astoria. If when he's like a little kid running is around. It? Yeah. That's Astoria. I yep. I I I just rewatched that movie like a couple of years ago, but I, I'm gonna rewatch it, you know, it must be on like Netflix or something. So where, I have to see. Where he's a little kid there, the taxi stand and mm-hmm. all that stuff. That's right behind the mm-hmm. Neptune Diner. That little block behind the Oh, Neptune my God. Diner. Oh, yeah. my God. That's so cool. I love that. And I think the where you guys shot the Christmas thing, that was the post office where they kidnapped the mailman. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's so funny. Well, I, I, the last time I watched that movie, I must not have lived in Astoria the last time I watched that mm-hmm. movie. I've only lived there like two years. Two, yeah, two and a half. Now, how big of is a difference when you, well, where did you move to when you first got to New York? Where when you- I first moved to New York, I lived in Prospect Heights. Then I lived in the East Village. Then I lived in Borham Hill. 
in Brooklyn. Then I lived in Ridgewood, Queens, and then I moved to Astoria. I moved two times in the neighborhood. So I've been all over the city. The only the only borough I haven't lived in, well, I haven't lived in the Bronx, but I did stay there for two weeks when I was 17. So I have been there a few times. And yeah, but I, at Staten Island, I've been to like two times. So Staten, Staten Island is not like the city at all. It's super suburbanized. Yeah. You know, very yeah. suburbanized. H- how big of a difference is Staten Island to Indianapolis? Or Indiana. Oh, it's still a big difference because in Indiana and well, Indianapolis is a, definitely you would consider it a city, but like mm-hmm. anything outside of Indianapolis, like the proper city, feels mm-hmm. like the middle of nowhere. It's very like a Pensatucky feel. Um, but compared to Staten Island, it's like you know, it's completely different. Like the whole feel is just very Midwestern. You know, it's yeah. like Staten Island. I would characterize it as like very east coast like new york like the midwest like people are different there's like their demeanor is different the way they speak is different the whole interaction is completely different so yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty different i would say now where i guess you have to stay here with your career and everything but if you had the chance would you go back like live there Um, permanently if you could do what you do here back in Indiana, would you do it? No, I don't think so. I don't, I, you know, if I had to go back to like take care of my parents or something, for example, Uh I would do that. But um, yeah, I just think like I'm more, Indianapolis is nice. It's a small city and they do have a little bit of an art scene, but you know, it's like compared to New York, I just don't, I wouldn't really feel comfortable in a smaller city. Like I really like to like, get up every morning and walk to my coffee yeah. place. I don't like to drive. Um, in Indiana, in Indianapolis, it's like every morning it's morning rush hour. You know, it's a nightmare. You have to drive, you know, any restaurant you have to drive, you know, and, and um, I don't really, I, I actually say I prefer the East coast sensibility to the Midwestern sensibility. Like East coast people are more like, you know, very like cutting and, like straightforward yeah. like I don't want to talk to you I don't know you you know but in the Midwest it's more like uh you know oh everyone's a friend and you mm. have to talk to everyone and you know I'm like an introverted person so like I don't want to speak to anyone that I don't know and in the Midwest that's considered like rude so it's like you know I just I would just prefer like, to tell you than like have to be friends with every you know stranger that I meet. <laughs> oh, that's good. I mean, yeah, but I think when you got here, were you like? I know you said you were introverted, but you were were you like friendly? And then it, you, did you get a little jaded? Have you become jaded living here? I guess would be the the, the question. think I've become jaded I mean I feel like I feel like yeah I I don't think I've become jaded just because I feel like you know I just feel really grateful for all the wonderful things in my life so I I wouldn't say I'm like a jaded bitter person but um you know I think like um it was definitely an adjustment period for me like moving to New York in terms of just like understanding the cultural difference like when I was in like, like I remember a couple times, like, for example, like when I first moved to New York, like I couldn't get on the train because there were so many people pushing past me to pack on the train. And like in Indiana, you would never, you would never push past someone to pack on the train because yeah. they don't have, because, because it's such a completely different, like culturally, like you would be like, Oh, after you, because there would always be enough room for everyone, you know? So I think like, stuff like that was probably, you know, as, as small or like insignificant as it sounds, it was like, that was probably the most like jarring, like difference for me of like having to get used to the fact that like people move quickly and there's not a lot of space, you know? Yeah. Every day it's go, go, go. I got to go to work. I don't Yeah. I, I'll give me my <laughs> coffee and bagel and I got to go. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> well, Katie, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, where can we find you? I'm um, on 
katiehannigan.com. All my stuff is on there. So please feel free to check it out. And thank you for having me, Mike. Check out Katie. Uh, go find the Christmas special with her and her boyfriend, Mike Vecchione. Mm-hmm. It is hilarious. Uh, as always, I don't forget to check out my guys at I Can Paint, SOF Bad Monkey. And you can check me out on Instagram at The Crack House Podcast. And find me on Twitter at Crack House Pod. Uh, see everybody next week. Hopefully I don't have COVID after this. And Katie, thank you again for being on the show. And I'll see everybody next week. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.